YouTube, it's me and Bethan again, and I thought I'd just do a video now to talk about one of my other conditions known as hyperplasia of the mandibular condyle. Yeah, mandibular rather. Uh, oh, yeah. Anyway, hyperplasia of the mandibular condyle has also been has been identified to be a rare, rare disorder or condition, whatever you want to call it. Um, which is probably why I can't find much information about it to talk about in this video. Um, hyperplasia of the mandibular condyle affects the jaw ulnaterally. I think I said that wrong, but ulnaterial, which is one basically one side of your jaw is affected, um, and it causes facial asymmetry, which means that your face isn't even. Um, yeah, same as my other condition, hemifacial microsomia does. Um, I'm calling it H, HMC, because it's easy for me to keep saying last and I keep repeating the whole thing. The HMC causes an abnormal growth within the jaw, meaning that like in my case, for instance, one side of the jaw stops growing too early, which is why I don't notice this, but I notice when I watch back my videos that I don't talk with half my jaw. If that makes sense, you'll probably know what I'm on about, but yeah, it's really weird because by when I'm talking to my friends, I don't, and when I'm talking now, I don't notice it. And when I'm looking in the mirror, because I even try talking in the mirror, I didn't notice it then. But it's only when I watch it back on these videos I notice it. But yeah, anyway, not that really matters. Um, so yeah, one side of my jaw stopped growing too early. Um, it usually appears in people aged between 11 and 30 years of age. Um, and it doesn't necessarily affect one side over the other, more than more than any. My mine affects my right side, all my conditions pretty much do to be honest. Um, but yeah, um, but yeah, it doesn't affect one side over the other any more commonly than it does the other side. Um, HMC, yeah, HMC. Yeah, I remember if I say it right. Um, yeah, um, causes an overdevelopment of the head neck and the man ball be in the jaw. Yeah, this results in quite in quite significant significant functional as well as aesthetic, aesthetical facial deformities as you can probably notice mine, which to be honest I don't notice them, like I just said earlier. I don't notice them but I do occasionally in photos, like when I'm smiling properly in that. I really notice it in them. Other than that I don't notice it but yeah anyway. Um, it's something known as CH, which causes the facial deformities. There are, wide, there are a wide variety of different forms of CH. These include CH1, which is the most common form of CH, and it causes an acceleration of the growth rate within the mechanisms of the jaw. CH1 is the most commonly found in females, as it occurs twice more than what it does in the male. don't know why, it just does. Um, also with CH1, the structure of the jawbone is relatively normal. This form of CH can occur bilaterally, meaning one side of the jaw will grow quicker than the other. Bilaterial means both sides, so yeah. Um, which is the most common type. Less co the least common type will be the ulnaterial, affecting one side of both the jaws, which is what I've got. One side of my jaw. Um, and it causes more of the facial deformities in the bilaterial. Usually the growth of the jaw growth of the jaw is increased during puberty and the jaw also carries on growing until in the early uh, to in the mid in the early to the mid twenties rather, uh, which is self limiting. But it can and usually does cause facial and jaw deformities. Um, CH one is the most common form that that is actually realised and um, CH1 usually as guys misdiagnosed and unnoticed. This is due to the lack of understanding of its growth pattern. CH2 on the other hand usually occurs in the form of ulnaterial and features an enlargement of head and condyle. The neck and condyle increase in thickness and height of the condyle thromus. Um, it also features the downward growth of the epicelestral maxillae. I think I said that right. Um, this form of hyperplasia of the mandibular condyle, or other people refer to it as mandibular con condylar hyperplasia, either way it's the same condition, um, it can happen at any age. However, with this form of hyperplasia, it is not self-limiting. 
This form can usually be caused by other conditions such as osteochondroma, chondroma, um, osteoma, or other types of con chondral enlargement, which can include things such as benign, malignant tumours of mandibular chondral, hemi uh, hemifacial hypertrophy. Um, the growth pattern of the condyl or condors um, can have a huge impact on the actual timing of treatments. This is due to the asymmetrical, asymmetrical difference of the growth in the condyl as it can develop a slow growth. If it's your limb material, a normal condyl should in average be around 15 to 20 millimetres and 8, 8 to 10 millimetres wide, but however the condyl in most cases will retain its structure and the length of the head and neck will remain increased. Um, your maxillofacial team will be able to identify whether there is an active growth within the condyl by worsening of the function as well as the aesthetical changes that you may notice. Um, they may also conduct scans of the jawbone such as x-rays um, and refer back to older scans and then look at the latest to see if there's any increased growth that was not present before. However, however it is not was possible to detect this uh, detect if there is an active growth um, within the jaw. This is due to the fact that it tends to work better when scanning a patient who is who is linearly affected. It can also be uh, recommended best not to scan those who have CH1 as if believe that the scans are not always diagnostic enough as would be required or liked. Um, in younger patients the scans can sometimes come back inconclusive. There are a number of treatments available which could include your, your ordinary orthodontics and orthogonatic surgery. This would usually be performed for those whose condyls have stopped growing and have become stable. With CH1 the main aim is to align the teeth and jaw which is you know what's happening in my case but I'll talk about that in another video. Um, however with CH2 this is not possible due to the extensive growth of the jaw. However there is still treatment available for CH2. This, in this includes three surgical options. The first option is to try and stop any further growth of the jaw using a condyl 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 oh, Condyloc... Oh. <laughs> I'll say this word today. Condylsectomy. You know. Something like that. Um, yeah. Which, which removes between 3 to 5 millimetres off the condyl. Um, yeah, the condyl head. And requires extensive orthogonatic jaw surgery to help, help correct the jaw deformity. This, this option is usually done in either one or two operations, depending on the hospital and the surgeon. Option two is corrective surgery of the jaw, which will not be done until the jaw has stopped growing, so this can result in the operation being delayed to the early 20s. And um, a result of this is that there could be a worsening or noticeable deformity, worsened speech, etc. Option three, orthogonatic surgery to correct the jaw. This is the most commonly uh, performed active performed during active growth for CH1. After the operation, the mandible will continue in its growth and will require the operation to be repeated. Um, yeah, there are a few other conditions and medical issues which can be related to mandibular condyla, condyla hyperplasia. These include rheumatoid arthritis and hormonal alterations which I don't have either of, but obviously, you know, some people do. Um, yeah, that's all I've found out so far, but if I find more information out then I'll update you with another video talking more about it. But, yeah, so for now I'll leave you there, and I'll speak to you again soon. Bye!